in a match like this, there's no point system. It's normally win or lose. This match is scheduled for three rounds of 10 minutes each. The man with the glasses and the white shirt is Grandmaster Elio Grayson. If you have to fight an opponent who is bigger and stronger than you, it is not a good idea to try to exchange punches with him. Our objective is not to give the other fighter the distance he needs to hit. You want to stay too far or too close. A hit from somebody like that is the last thing you want. The jumping around you see is in hopes to disguise his approach. Due to the big weight difference, it might be difficult to flip the opponent. One has to wait for the right moment. Being on the bottom does not necessarily mean that you are losing the fight, especially when you are fighting a heavier opponent. You may have to wait for a while for the right opportunity to turn things around. Jiu-Jitsu techniques will give you the elements to wait for that opportunity. It is smart to keep the opponent very close so he cannot develop the distance for a powerful hit. Strikes to the kidneys can be very effective on the long run. In one of my father's fights, his opponent took such a beating to the kidneys that after the fight, he was urinating fragments of the kidney. Remember that in reality, it is much more difficult than you realize to use fancy kicks and those supposedly deadly punches especially when you're dealing with someone as strong as this man. There's a good chance they might not work. As you can see, in this kind of fight, they are not trying to make it look good for the camera or the audience. They are trying to survive. In their first fight, Three years before, the brawler was sure of victory and fought much more aggressively, but that didn't work. He was defeated with a choke hold in 12 minutes. Now, in this rematch, Hickson's second professional fight, the brawler is a little more apprehensive. The difference between the Jiu-Jitsu taught at the Gracie Academy and all the other martial arts styles, including other styles of Jiu-Jitsu, is that the evolutionary process of our teaching methods is the result of extensive research by Grandmaster Elio Grace. Not only did he have to adapt some of the traditional Japanese techniques to accommodate his lack of strength, but more important, 
was his contribution as a teacher, developing the teaching method so efficient that he could teach virtually anyone. The Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Torrance, California, is the only organization that upholds those teaching standards and is endorsed by my father, Elio Gracie. The referee will stop the fight and drag both contenders to the middle of the mat. But notice that the brawler is going to sneak in a punch during the break. The referee will call his attention, but since this is not a point system fight, there's nothing he can do about it. He can't disqualify the brawler for that. Everyone who looks at martial arts as a means of self-defense is really looking for the effectiveness that can be found at the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy. The brawler now is trying to apply the same choke as he did on the boxer in the previous fight. But the Gracie brother knows better and avoids that. Once again, the brawler goes for the choke hold. Once again, the Gracie brother prevents him from succeeding. Believe it or not, the safest thing to do when fighting somebody like this is to stay as close as possible so he doesn't have the distance to hit you with the effectiveness that he would like to. Knowing the proper techniques of Jiu-Jitsu gives you the confidence to launch in.
Keep in mind that Jiu-Jitsu was developed so that the little man can fight the big man. Sometimes when you have a strong opponent like this, simply holding on, it forces you into waiting for the right opportunity so that you can make your move. That is the end of the first round. They go back to the action. The big man now is trying some intimidation techniques. The Gracie brother did not hear the bell ring. And he checks with the referee to see if the round has begun. The big man is tired and he wouldn't mind waiting a little longer. The Gracie brothers knows that and is going to start pressing the buttons and push the fight to his pace. As they fall down, the brawler almost accomplishes a crucial top position, but proper leg work prevents it. In a fight of this magnitude, there's much more happening than one realizes. Every little movement, no matter how insignificant it might seem, has a place in the overall result. Just like in a chess game, the way you move a little pawn may decide the result of the whole game. You can actually feel your opponent's thoughts. It is important that you don't think they are just holding on to each other. The Jiu-Jitsu man knows that his opponent is tired and is preparing to make his move. his way around the back of his opponent and gradually climbs on his back. And just like those anacondas from the north of Brazil, by the delta of the Amazon, he'll wrap himself around his prey. The end is near. In his last attempt to escape, the desperate man rolls around. He even tries eye gouging, but with the squeeze on the neck, the wild man taps out, and the tradition of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy lives on. <laughs>